I've got another one of the Lone Rangers knives. This is a paramil paramilitary two in 52100 steel. I've never used that stuff before. So I was interested to take a look at this one and see how it is to sharpen. And since I'm most familiar with my Shapton Pro Stones, this, these are what I'm going to use tonight. I'm going to go through a different progression than I did last time. Someone noted, and they were 100% correct, that as I was using my 5K stone, I was really having to go at it to remove the scratch patterns. I should have introduced another stone before I jumped to that 5K. So in this instance, what we're going to do is 320, 1K, 2K, then 5K. It still looks like I got some deep scratches after the 2K. I may bring out my new Batama 4K. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Scratch pattern's a little wonky, so I'm going to go ahead and mark it with Sharpie just to make sure I'm hitting where I need to be hitting. It's remo that's removing Sharpie all along the bevel except for back here in the base. And I don't know if you can tell, but there's a little bit of a recurve choil going on. Very popular with Spider Co. Alright, so now I'm getting in there. And what I'm doing is I'm cocking the knife up at an angle like this. And I'm coming in. factory scratches, although they were look like they had already been touched up at some point, they are now almost all gone. I can still see I've got just a hairline left before I reach that apex. And actually, let me show you guys this so you'll see what I'm seeing. I want to show you guys what I'm looking at. I don't take enough time to really demonstrate to you guys the things that I see in correlation with my sharpening. So first of all, we've got that nasty recurve going on. So that's one issue, but I know I'm almost reaching the apex because you can see this bright light shining. That is the existing edge, as it were. Got a little bit here, still in the tip, definitely all through here. So just kind of looking at the knife edge under the light, you can see where you are in relation to where you're sharpening. So hopefully that'll give you guys a little idea of what I'm looking at as I go through this. Someone asked me recently about pressure. I usually use just the weight of my hands for pressure. However, when I start doing my long strokes, I get into a rhythm. And that rhythm, I'll start with pressure down at the heel, and then I'll apply more pressure as I get to the tip. Then on the rebound, I loosen my pressure, and then apply pressure again as I get towards the heel. So it's kind of a 
a U effect as far as my pressure goes. So as I go down the knife, it goes light pressure to heavy pressure, then light pressure back to heavy pressure. Really difficult to explain, but that's what I'm doing. Now when I was talking about pressure, I wasn't putting additional pressure down. As I go about it, I'm basically just applying my hand weight. So the most pressure I ordinarily use is about four to five pounds. And that's usually when I'm trying to grind out a, a chip or I got some deep scratches I'm really trying to get down into. I've got a full burr now across the entire edge. I'm gonna switch to the other side now. Spin my stone around so I try to get even wear. And I'm going to do the same thing, apply a little sharp marker. Make sure I'm hitting that bevel. I am right on the money, right where I need to be. Good deal. It's like the tip is ground shallow or more shallow than the rest of the knife so I'm going to have to grind a little bit to get down in there. I've described this before too when I'm sharpening a tip. I keep my finger on the knife like this so that my finger actually rides the stone as the tip comes in contact with it. And that lets me know I'm right where I need to be and that's where I stop. I don't try to go over or higher as soon as I can feel my finger touching. I know I'm right on that tip, I'm right where I need to be. And that's kind of my guide for getting into the tip don't pay a whole lot of special attention. I've seen guys who will, you know, just concentrate on the tip constantly. I don't do that. It's because it tends to wear the tip out and you get shallow spots and things start getting uneven. Doing it the way I'm doing it tends to keep things fairly even, although I do have hiccups, of course. This isn't a perfect science, especially not with me being at the helm, but it gets me where I usually need to go. So I stuck with it. I've got a burr. I'm going to do a few alternating passes, try to clean it up a little bit. So the scratch pattern for 320 grit is pretty coarse. However, the 1K Shapton Pro is usually coarse enough to remove those scratches. It also can depend upon the steel though. If you've got a really high abrasion resistant steel like Maximit for example, and you jump from say a 320 grit stone to a 1K stone, it may not be enough to get rid of all the scratches, in which case you'd want to introduce another stone in between it. So you might want to go from 320 to 700 and then to 1K. 
that'll help you not only keep some of the wear off of your stone, it'll help you ref help you refine the scratch pattern a little easier, and things won't be so so intense and so long upon just one single stone. Again, it really depends upon the stones you're using, how well they work together, as well as the steel. I've heard 52-100 is easy stuff to work with, so I don't foresee a problem here, but I'll know more once I get started. Got a little bit of a low spot where this silly recurve is, trying to get in there. I'm using light pressure here, letting the stone do 100% of the work. I want to go slow and methodical. I don't want to just apply a ton of pressure, get in there and mess something up. I may let that ride because that will come out in future sharpenings. See a little spot right here in the belly that I haven't quite hit the apex on. So I'm going to put my finger directly on that. And see if this will get it ground down into that point. I'm not applying anything additional as far as pressure goes. I'm just placing my finger directly over that area. Got a burr there, so I am good to go. I'm gonna try to clean it up a little bit. Things tend to go a little bit faster once you get past your coarse stone. I tend to always advocate starting with a coarse stone. It'll help you grind out any fatigued metal, get rid of any problem areas, get your bevel set where you want it. Now you don't have to go to extremes if you've got a knife that isn't that dull. I mean, you don't have to go to 120, 180 grits but you want to start around 300, 400, get all that damage removed. At least that's how I do it. I'm going to go ahead and flatten my stone. It's been a while since this one's been flattened, I think. I'm using an Atoma plate here. I got just a little $5 suction cup I got off of Amazon. I've created a burr on both my 320 and my 1k stones with the 2k I don't need to form a burr I just want to make sure I've got the scratch pattern of the 1k completely removed or as removed as I possibly can now it's not always possible to get every single scratch out so if you're not getting a true mirror finish don't feel bad very rarely will you ever see or achieve that. The guys that do, I think they spend a lot of time 
polishing out scratches that most guys would probably just let ride. It's not to say it's impossible to do. It's just not practical. At least not for me. I do want a bright luster on my knife, but I don't have to have a true scratchless mirror shine because I'm going to use it. And as soon as I use it, it's going to get scratched. And there are benefits to having a bright luster polished edge. They're easy to strop. They're easy to bring the edge back on, at least in my opinion. The cutting on them is easy for fine detailed work, for doing push cuts. Now it may not be the greatest for a tomato, but honestly I've never had problems cutting a tomato skin. Some guys claim that there is a difference, you know, I personally, I don't see much of one. Unless I'm using a really uh, budget friendly type steel. What I mean by that, I mean like 420HC, 440A, 440B. Those type of steels, for whatever reason, when I polish them, they just tend to slip and slide on material as opposed to biting in and cutting. You know, that might not be the polished edge doing that. It might be something in my own personal sharpening. But that's just been my experience. I prefer to leave 1K, 2K edge on those type of steels. Whereas most of my other pocket knives, I usually take up to about 5K and then strop. 5K seems to be a good stopping point for me. Every now and then I'll break out the 8K or the 1500 grit just to get a really nice shine going, but it's not too often I do that, and it's usually just for the video. I'm pretty much done with this stone. I'm just going to do a few back and forth passes, and we will move on to 5K. Two thousand grit fresh off the stone has a really sticky, sticky sharpness to it. I know a lot of guys like that sticky sharpness. So if that's something you're after, 2K is a good stopping place. The scratch pattern looks pretty nice. What I'm using here is a Tanjo Natural Nagora. I'm just going to create a little bit of a slurry. This helped me uh, get rid of the scratch patterns from the previous stones. and help keep my stone from loading up so badly. That should be good enough. As you can see, I've got quite a bit of buildup going on, and I know I'm not anywhere near where I want to be as far as the scratch pattern goes. So I'm going to take my stone again. I'm going to clean that 
that swarf off of the stone. That'll help create a little bit more slurry too. Let's see where we are. So I'm getting a pretty bright polish, but there is a little haziness to it. That haziness is caused by the slurry. Usually a slurry will give you a, uh, a frosty, hazy kind of finish. So I'm going to go ahead and start diluting this down a little bit, adding a little more water. This will help break it down get it thinner until I'm just eventually riding on the stone at which point I should start getting a really nice bright luster I'm going to keep the buildup that's on the stone there because that will help burnish the edge and create a little bit more of a higher polish. That's starting to look really good. So for this knife, I'm just going to use white compound. My shrop's getting a little loaded. It's getting about time to clean it.
we're gonna do edge on up edge tester. See how this edge measures. One ten. And 90. So the edge on up edge test came out to an average of 94. I actually expected it to be a little lower considering how well this thing polished. It's got a very nice edge maybe just a hair too polished for my liking I would like to see a little more bite but it's not bad This still responded to the stones very well. It'll take an edge, no problem. All you gotta do is rub it across a few times and that razor will come right out. Still got a little bit of a issue going on in that choil area. I would say in the next two or three sharpenings, if I were in the Lawn Ranger's position, I'd probably put a sharpening notch in that guy. It's starting to get a pretty nasty recurve in it. That's really gonna start affecting the sharpening of the the edge itself right now I mean you saw I had to kick the knife up at an absurd angle like this and then come in on the stone in a U shape perhaps dealing with a fixed angled guide you could probably get in there and, and grind that down a little better but with my stones I just wasn't able to get into that spot I do like this carbon fiber it's pretty pretty grippy for what it is it's got a little little wear and use on it like with all of his knives he puts them through the paces well, guys I appreciate you watching if y'all have any questions or comments as always leave them below y'all have a good one